Okay, here we're going to be looking at recording common stock on our balance sheet when we issue it. And we're going to be looking at the difference between issuing common stock with a par value and without a par value. And when we issue common stock with a par value, uh, we're creating here a liability for the company that's issuing the stock. That is, they can't reduce the stockholders' equity in this common stock below its par value for either dividend payments or through any other contra equity accounts. And also, when we use this term here, par value, it would have the same meaning here as stated value or face value. So all these uh, terms here, the par value, stated value, and face value are interchangeable. All right, for issuing common stock with a par value for our stockholders' equity on our balance sheet, we'd be increasing here our common stock or crediting our common stock account here for the number of shares we issued times the par value that we assign to that common stock. And then over here on our asset side of the, of the equation, we'd be debiting or increasing our cash account here for the number of shares that were issued times the issue price, or that would be the actual price that we received when we issued those shares. And then back over here on our stockholders' equity side of the equation, we set up this account additional paid in capital for common stock. And that's the excess that we received in cash here over what we recorded here in our common stock for our par value. So that's based on here the number of shares that were issued times the difference between the issue price and the par value of that common stock. So looking at our debit and credit entries, uh, we had a credit here or increase of $4,000 for additional paid in capital for common stock and a credit here of $2,000 in our common stock account for the par value. And that $6,000 here balances with the uh, debit amount here uh, that we received here in cash, $6,000. And then one also note here, if we issue our common stock here at the par value, then our additional paid in capital here for common stock would, would be zero. Okay, for issuing common stock with no par value, our equity account here for common stock, we'd increase it here for the full amount that we received when we issued the stock. So we credit it or increase it here for the full amount. And that would be the number of shares that we issued times the issue price or the actual price that we received when we issued that stock. And then over here on our asset side on the balance sheet, we debit or increase our cash here for the number of shares that were issued times the issue price or the actual price. So our cash account here and a debit amount of 6000 would balance with the credit amount here in our common stock account of $6,000. Now, when we use this uh, no par value, uh, we do not create additional paid in capital here for common stock. That account does not exist. The full amount here is accredited or increased here in our common stock account. Okay, here, let's look at issuing common stock below par value or at a discount. For our equity account here in common stock, we would increase it or credit it, credit it for the number of shares issued times the par value that we assign to that common stock. Then over on our asset side for our cash, we debit it or increase it for the number of shares that were issued times the discount price, or that's the actual price we received when we issued that stock. And this discount price here is below the par value. So we need a balancing amount here on our, in our equity account, and we use a stock discount account. And that's a contra account that we set up here to this common stock. So that we would debit or increase here for the number of shares we issued times the difference here between the par value that we assigned for that stock minus the discount price that we received for that stock. And uh, in this case, it would be a debit here. And let's just, we'd increase it by debiting it here. So to look at our balance here between our assets and our equity, we'd have a debit here in our cash account, plus this debit here in our stock discount account, and that would balance here with the credit amount here in our common stock account. Now we also had another option here. We could have set up this additional paid in capital here to common stock, but uh, what we would do in that case, we decrease additional paid in capital for common stock for the difference here between the 
par value that we assigned and the actual or the discount price that we received here in cash. Okay, one other item here. That is the stock issuance costs. Those are the costs involved when we're issuing this common stock. We could handle it in two ways here. And number one here would be to directly reduce our st stockholders' equity account by using this additional paid-in capital here to common stock, and we debit it or decrease it here for the issuing costs of those common stocks. Or number two, we could set it up here as an asset on the balance sheet and uh, capitalize it and amortize it down. So setting it up here as an asset, let's say it would list it here under organizational costs, or so debit or increase that asset account here. And then we'd set up this contra asset account here, accumulated amortization of the stock issuance cost. So we, as we uh, amortize it, we'd credit our accumulated amortization here, and then we'd recognize it as, as an expense here in our income statement for the amortization of those expenses. So this accumulated amortization would eventually reduce our organizational costs here to zero and then we would have recognized all those organizational costs here on our income statement. Okay to summarize when we issued common stock with a par value our common stock account would include the number of shares we issued times the par value that we assigned to those shares and then our cash account here, that would be increased here by the number of shares we issued times the issue price or the actual price we received for those shares. And then the excess here of the cash amount that we received over the common stock par value amount that we have assigned would be set up here in an account called additional paid in capital here to common stock. And that would be the number of shares that we issued uh, times the difference between the issue price minus the par value of those common stocks. And then when we uh, issued common stock without a par value, the entire amount here is assigned to our common stock account. And then for our cash account, we would increase that uh, by the number of shares we issued times the issue price.